some five years ago. Uh, Mark Evans, the director, Nia Roberts, who plays uh, Gwen in the film, and myself took a journey to Patagonia to follow um, the footsteps of the first Welsh settlers who went there around 1865. Mark just said to us, I've got an idea. And he told us this idea of an old lady and a young boy traveling to Wales looking for her past. And the idea of a young girl and a young man from Wales going to uh, Patagonia looking for their future. Rhys, ti'n gwybod trip ffotograffiaeth ti i ddau America? Hmm? Oh, falle adal yn iddo gyda ti wedi'r cwbl. Os mae hynny dal yn iawn gyda ti. Beth yma job of nadw, na? Ti'n iawn. Mae fe yn job of nadw. O, oh, fydd e'n fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> My character is called uh, Rhys. He is paired up with Gwen. Their relationship's kind of plodding along happily and not particularly eventful. And he gets a dream job to go out to Patagonia and photograph chapels, Welsh chapels in Patagonia. Asks her to go along with him and she unexpectedly says yes. Gwen's in a pretty bad place, really, when the, when the film starts. I and mean, the film opens when um, she hears the news that she isn't able to have a baby. And Therese very much wants to have children, so she's too scared to tell him. And one can only guess, really, how damaging that could be in a, in, in, in a relationship. And, of course, almost as soon as they arrive in Patagonia, things start falling apart. For the Welsh, Patagonia was this unique adventure in our history, partly because I think um, there was this fantastic relationship that developed historically between the Welsh gauchos as they became, the Welsh colony, and the, and the indigenous Indians at the time that Argentina was forming. So it was an amazing historical sort of um, coming together of, of disparate you know, elements. Um, and so they were Welsh-speaking cowboys. first impressions of the Mateo character is that he's a little bit of a Lothario and, you know, I think he takes a shine to Gwen immediately. Look at that. Look at that. Obviously Bill Mateo, um, in the, the story sense, is um, a guide for uh, Reese and Gwen when they arrive in Patagonia. He's a little bit of a Peter Pan complex. You know, he loves playing up to the image of the sort of slightly James Dean cowboy. What I liked about Matteo is that he has, there are flaws behind the sort of facade of, you know, the Zippo lighter and the, you know, the rugged jeans. When we first started talking about the project, Mark said, we should do it in Welsh. In a way, if you're making a film about the links between Wales and Patagonia, then it would be wrong to not do it in Welsh and Spanish. And, and when you're there, people speak either Welsh or Spanish. And we thought, why not? Why not be true to um, to the story? <laughs> I'm a Welsh speaker, it's my first language, but I'm not a Spanish speaker, so we realised really you had to subtitle everything to get an equal rhythm. I mean, because that's the, what the viewing experience is going to be for most people, so it was technically quite an interesting and at times scary process. Bueno, que lo pido, eh? Un Arriba la copa, Arriba! But then, you know, we embarked upon this because for some reason, I find it more interesting to embark on the unknown than I do on the known. You know, that's the kind of the way it is, right? So you go, so it feels interesting and a good idea and, and, and slightly experimental in approach, and then you get to the, the nub of it and, and it's kind of make or break, you know. Boy, stuff is from my heart. Reese and Martin play pool drunk. Scene 141. <laughs> Martin is an Argentinian, Welsh speaker from Patagonia, who, having been to the Falklands War, lost the plot a bit, and in fact lost everything. All 
these people are on various journeys in the film. Uh, and he's on a he's on a never-ending journey. He, he never will go home. He never will find home, as it were. When you go to Patagonia, the landscapes are so majestic because you go from the dust and the desert into the, into the Andes and these snow-capped mountains. And one of our fears, having shot Patagonia first, was, was you know, we, when we go to Wales, we want it to not look like the poor relation. We want it to look just as powerful. And, and the country blew us away. We just shot two films, basically. And then hoped that they would come together. And that, and that was the biggest challenge, not so much the shooting of them, although one was especially, we did Argentina first and then Wales, so when we were shooting Wales we were thinking quite a lot about the transitions between the two stories, but at the end of the day I wanted them to feel like two short stories, I suppose, that collided but didn't necessarily always connect. Para ser un país tan chico, cuesta bastante recorrerlo. Mark came to me with this idea. I love the concept of it. I love the idea of uh, this dream people have of living and having a better life somewhere else. And, you know, already the theme really interested me. Um, and I like the idea of having the two stories, the two strands, and how they correspond, and maybe things that come back in terms of the landscape. Or, so it's more, almost like a piece of music, you know, like how you compose a piece of music with themes and things, you know, and the rhythm of it. Split narratives are quite fashionable in a way now, and you've seen a lot of films that have done it supremely well. South American films in particular for some reason. But I had not, when we first came, when we came to the edit, I thought, well, I just want, I should just sort of see which other films have done two disconnected narratives, you know? And I couldn't find any really, and I thought, is that because it's a bad idea? You know, is it doomed as a project? Because in a way, everything relied, everything over and above the, the stories themselves relied on, the, on them somehow working and not you know, kind of boring or frustrating the audience in a way. And the way we solved it ultimately was we cut two films and then we said, right, you know, th that's, that's the essence of, the, of that film. Now where would one go across to the other story? It is a very lovely story. I fall in love with the story and with the character. <laughs> Her mother was Welsh and she was sent to Patagonia because she was pregnant and she was very young and they sent the parents sent them there to Patagonia to hide this situation. I always had the fantasy to know this place which she left. Alejandro is a boy from Patagonia. He goes uh, to Buenos Aires with Keris, Marta's character. Um, because she has to be operated on her eyes. So I go with her, I'm the one in charge of um, going with her, taking care of her. So we go to Buenos Aires, but then she changes her mind and she decides to go to Wales to look for her ancestors. I think the plan with Wales was to kind of start in that bed and breakfast land of Cardiff and, and the idea that, you know, that to a Welsh Patagonian, certainly Wales was a kind of promised land, just like Patagonia has got this mythology for Welsh people. And you get here, and it's kind of mundane and prosaic. And gradually, as, you, as they work their way north, the country opens up. Round that, what can I get you? Um, today we've got sausage, egg, bacon, burger and chips, savello and chips, and uh, double portions of six pounds. Got a few things in. Good easy. Not that easy. This project felt so enormous to me um, in, in loads of ways because it was my debut. Duffy came into the process early enough on that she was a great influence on that part. The first thing that she did, which really impressed me, was she sent me um, a kind of mood board for the character. Images and old postcards of Nevin and uh, pictures from just, you know, cut and paste stuff. Um, she's a very visual person, Duffy, I think, and I think she approached it from that point of view, from the outside in, and, and you know, found found a girl who actually could be Duffy who hadn't become a famous pop singer, you know. I took it very seriously. It wasn't just a, a whimsical moment in time. It was something that I truly thought, this is such a big thing for me in my life. I don't know if I'll ever make a movie again, but I'm going to remember this forever. Patagonia 
Patagonia was, it was such an intimate film. It was such a lovely experience. And everyone, you know, we all ended up living together. And I mean, everyone bought into the dream of the sort of film we were making. And so it felt like a, a family in a way, going off to do something that they really wanted to do.